The spiritual world is the eternal abode of the Lord, where He forever resides with His eternal companion. This spiritual realm is self-luminous, as Lord Krishna says, that abode of mine is not illuminated by the sun or moon, nor by electricity. One who reaches it never returns to this material world. When the living entity, with his own free will, wants to become God, he is given the chance to exhibit his impossible attempt in the material world. The material world, as opposed to the spiritual world, is dark and temporary. The living entity thus falls from the spiritual world and becomes captured by the illusory energy of the Lord, which forces the living entity to exist under the conception of false egoism such as I am American, I am African, I am white, I am Chinese, I am a communist, I am a dog, and so on. Due to this misconception of his existence, the living entity acts in many ways, which creates a specific mindset. At the time of death, this state of mind will act as the blueprint for creating his future bodies. Lord Krishna tells us, Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, that state he will attain without fail. Actions done by human beings are mainly of two kinds pious actions and sinful actions. Lord Krishna tells us how to differentiate between pious and sinful activities. One should understand what is duty and what is not duty by the regulations of the scriptures. Knowing such rules and regulations, one should act so that he may gradually be elevated. By performing pious actions sanctioned by the scriptures that God gives us, the living entity amasses a stock of pious credit, which he enjoys as life in heavenly realms. In these heavenly regions, the living entity enjoys pleasures thousands of times more pleasurable than found on earth and lives a very long lifespan. There are many levels of higher planetary systems. In still higher heavenly spheres, Great sages and ascetics perform sacrifice and austerities to ascend to more elevated regions. The highest heaven is called Satyaloka. The duration of life in Satyaloka is calculated to be 15 trillion 480 billion years. When the living entity exhausts his pious credits, he falls back again into earthly spheres. If he then commits sinful activities, he amasses heaps of sins which will lead him to hellish planetary systems. The four pillars of sinful life are meat-eating, intoxication, gambling and illicit sex. At death he sees the messengers of the Lord of Death come before him, their eyes full of wrath and in great fear he passes stool and urine. As a criminal is arrested for punishment by the constables of the state, a person engaged in criminal sense gratification is similarly arrested by the Yamadutas, who bind him by the neck with strong rope and cover his subtle body so that he may undergo severe punishment. After having been judged, he suffers a particular punishment on a specific hellish planet. He is placed in the midst of burning pieces of wood and his limbs are set on fire. In some cases, he is made to eat his own flesh or have it eaten by others. His entrails are pulled out by the hounds and vultures of hell, even though he is still alive to see it, and he is subjected to torment by serpents, scorpions, gnats and other creatures that bite him. After having served his due sentence, the soul is made to go through all 8,400,000 species of life, starting by inhabiting aquatic bodies. He then enters the life form like those of plants and trees. He then becomes an insect and goes through all different forms of bugs, which is then followed by reptile and bodies. He then takes birth as a bird and then as a beast. 
he thus takes birth and dies again and again, thus experiencing the entire animal kingdom. Human birth is thus extremely rare and precious, for only in this human form of life can one understand his spiritual identity and thus get freed from the cycle of birth and death. In this human life, if one surrenders unto the Supreme Lord, the Lord takes care to remove all of the living entity's karmic reactions. Lord Krishna says, Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reaction. Do not fear. Always think of me and become my devotee. Worship me and offer your homage unto me. Thus you will come to me without fail. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. When the living entity revives his eternal relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he is transferred to a particular spiritual planet where he reciprocates with the Supreme Lord with a particular relationship as neutral, servant, friend, parent, or lover. Thus eternally freed from birth, death, old age, anxiety, and suffering, he enjoys eternal blissful life with the Supreme Lord where pleasure infinitely intensifies throughout eternity. Krishna, who is known as Govinda, the Supreme Godhead, he has an eternal blissful spiritual body. He is the origin of all, he has no other origin, and he is the prime cause of all causes.